In this video, I'm going to show you why you should be using the Continental Grip and why using the Continental Grip will help you reach the full potential of your serve. So stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to give you a quick tip and drill that you could be using to improve your serve. In this video, I'm going to show you why you should be using the Continental Grip. Now, when you start out, a lot of times it's easy to use what we call the frying pan grip, which is closer to an eastern forehand grip. And it's great to start off because when you think about it, the grip on the serve is not necessarily the most natural thing. But as you start advancing and you want to create more power, spin, and accuracy on your serve, you need to start thinking about switching that grip to a continental grip. So first of all, why is the continental grip important? Why is it more important than using the uh, frying pan grip that you might already be using? First of all, when you have the continental grip, it allows you to add more spin to the ball. So why is adding spin to the ball important? Well, if you can add more spin, we can also add some more power because we can control it now. The reason why if you're using a pancake grip or the eastern forehand grip for your serve, it limits your serve because it limits the amount of top spin that you can put on the ball, which means you can only hit the ball so hard before the ball sails long. So what is the continental grip? The continental grip is where you hold the racket out in front and you grab it with your top pad on the top uh, of the second bevel and you hold it with your uh, knuckles going across the racket. A great way to find out if you're using the continental grip is feel if you can do this, if you can have this hammer action. Not where the, you have to kind of contort your wrist to get into that position, but if you're just coming right down and you're able to really use this pad to push down on the racket. Now. A quick tip to help you understand if you're using the Continental Grip the correct way at contact is when we go through our motion with the Continental Grip and we go up to hit it, what you're going to notice is you're going to have this flat part of your wrist. If you're using the incorrect grip like the pancake and you're trying to go up, you're going to notice this wrist buckles and uh, pops up. You don't want that. Now the advantage again, because we're using that Continental Grip, it allows me to go up and brush the ball which means I can also add more power, I can swing harder, and I can use the spin to control where I'm putting the ball. Versus when we go up with the pancake, if you notice, I can't really go up that much on the ball. It's very limiting how much it allows me to push up on the ball compared to the continental grip now, I can hit a lot more spin on the ball. This allows me to hit serves like kicks, slices, um, even adding more spin to my flat serve so I can hit it harder and more consistent. So. The biggest thing you want to know is, hey, you know, I'm using this pancake grip, I want to switch to the continental grip, what do I do? So if we're making the switch from the pancake to the continental, the first thing you got to understand is your swing path is different. If you're used to hitting with the pancake, your swing path, or what I mean, the path of the racket is going straight. So you can see I'm going straight. And this opens up the racket face so the ball can go where the racket's telling it. The difference is with the continental grip, my path of my racket is going to come at an angle. If you notice where I'm swinging, it's almost like if I'm looking in this direction and I'm going to tomahawk chop the racket this way. The key is when you do this is that the strings have to look where you want the ball to go. I know a lot of um, my players have tried making the switch and the first thing they do when they go up to the line, they try it and they go through the serve and they try to hit it. What happens is the ball veers off the court because even though they switched the grip now from the pancake to the continental, look what the strings have done. It's closed. The racket face is aiming that way off to the court. So what we have to do is make sure when we come up, we're going to be tomahawk chopping, but making sure that the strings are facing out towards the direction we want to hit the ball. So I want to give you two simple drills you can use to help you develop more spin and the use of the continental grip with your serve. So the first drill I want to give you is something very simple. The first big thing that I hear a lot of people having trouble with is that when they're making the switch, when they go through their motion a lot of times, what you see is they go through their motion and then they switch the grip back to their old grip because it feels comfortable. And they're like, you know, I just can't get around it. I go through my motion and it switches back. One great tool you can use is a pen or pencil. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold the bracket with the continental grip and then you're going to slide or slide the pen under your trigger finger. Now what this does by putting it here, it makes you keep the grip. And if you really move the grip at all, you're gonna make you're gonna notice it. Actually, it's a lot harder just to move it because you have the pen there. So what it does is it makes you keep that grip. So if you're struggling with coming around, switching to your new uh, continental grip, and you're switching back to your grip, use a pen or a pencil. And like I said, get the grip right, 
slide your pen right underneath your trigger finger and that's going to be a great tool that you can use to make sure that when you go through your motion you're not going to switch your grip when it's behind you. You're going to keep that continental grip and you can start working on it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to spike the ball down into the court with the first ball. The reason we want to do this is we want to get our hand and wrist used to turning at this angle, okay, instead of coming and cutting the ball in half. Now when I go up, I'm going to make sure I'm going to come on top of the ball and spike it down with a little bit of spin. If you're not used to continental grip, just go ahead and just work on spiking the ball in front of you. Now this is, I'm going to go through a couple demos, it should look like this. We're going to come up, spike the ball right in front of you. Again, spike the ball right in front of you. Now, what we don't want to happen with this type of drill is that when we come up, we're going to go, you see how the ball came off the court? It's because my hand and my strings aren't using the racket to face inside the court. So we want to really make sure when we spike the ball, the ball should be spiking right in front of us, going off in, uh, into the court. The second part of this drill is we're going to start hitting the ball in the court. So what we're going to do is transition this kind of like bridge from spiking the ball down and making sure that the racket face is facing down to now we're going up on the ball, keeping the racket face the same way. So when we do this, I'm not really trying to hit the ball in. I'm just trying to get a feel for getting the strings to face inside the court. So it's going to look like this. My racket's up and I'm really focusing on keeping my strings facing inside the court. What we don't want to happen is this. I'm using that continental grip again and I'm going to angle my racket strings off to the side. So make sure you go out and use these two drills. These are great drills to help you bridge that gap. Remember, first drill, use that pen if you're making the switch from the continental to, the, sorry, if you're making the switch from the pancake to the continental. Second, come out, spike a couple balls to get used to the, having the strings facing down and forward, then transition that to doing the exact same thing but hitting the ball in the air and hitting it straight. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up below and leave me any comments or questions you might have because I love having some interaction and hearing how these tips are working for you. This is Kevin Garlington at TotalTennisDomination.com and if you want more videos, come and subscribe to my channel at Total Tennis Game at YouTube.